Journalist Chris Wallace has covered American politics for five decades now. His Countdown book series takes on some of the biggest events in world history. His new book is Countdown to 1960. It is Knockout, the behind-the-scenes story of the 312 days that changed America's politics forever. Mm. He takes us inside the campaigns of John F. Kennedy and Richard Nixon in the 1960 election. We're very happy to say that Chris Wallace joins us in studio today. Good. Good to okay. see you, Chris. Wallace. Well, thank you so much for having me. No, I'm so glad you're here. I love how you set up the two candidates, uh, Nixon, an enigma, uh, ambitious, paranoid, no buddy buddy boy. Uh, John Kennedy, good looking, articulate, connected with the voters, but he was young and inexperienced. So that's how you set the scene between these two candidates. What do you want, to, want us to know off the bat about the two of them? And then I want to hit the countdown. Well, uh, it, it's one of the most interesting elections. I was 13 years old when yeah. it happened, and it was the first election I was personally engaged in watching the debates. It really revolutionized American politics. I think Kennedy ran the first modern election. He had his own personal pollster. His very rich family bought him his own private plane, the Caroline, named after yeah. his daughter, that he flew around the country. He used TV in ways that nobody ever had. Nixon, a, a, a much darker, more complicated figure, but he had been the vice president for eight years to Dwight Eisenhower, who was a huge war hero and very popular politically. First presidential debate, first presidential debate that was on television. 70 million people watched. And it, 70 it, million. It, Let's think we would all kill for those numbers today. <laughs> I mean, so you take us through the 312 days, and then we get down to the nitty and the gritty. 11 hours and 45 minutes, landslide no longer possible for Kennedy. Nine hours and 30 minutes, Nixon says doesn't look good. One minute, Nixon concedes in a telegram. This is where the fun begins. Because many people thought that that there, and you say, may have been election irreg irregularities. And they encouraged him to challenge the results, and he did not. Yeah, and that's, there are two reasons I wrote this book. One is it's a great story. But two, I think it has tremendous relevance to the controversy over 2020 and to really the controversy that we're living with right now. I, I believe that the 1960 election, all I'll say is may really have been stolen. Tremendous election irregularities in Illinois, Richard J. Daley, the, the boss of the Democratic machine, Texas, Lyndon Johnson, who was the running mate. Uh, and, and Nixon was under considerable pressure to contest the election and decided not to. So, so what you had is an election that may really have been stolen and the, quote, loser sitting there deciding, you know, we're in the middle of the Cold War. We can't not have a president while this is being adjudicated by the courts. For the good of the country, if not for me personally, I am going to concede the election and of course, that's just sets everything that happened in 2020 yeah. on its head, where there was no ev evidence of fraud, and Donald Trump four years later is still talking about it, the election being stolen. We're also in a different media environment than we were in 1960. And one of the values of studying history is to understand the range of what's possible, and that informs how what to expect going uh, into 2024. Here, um, Donald Trump, according to a filing uh, that came out just yesterday or two days ago didn't seem to care whether there was credible fraud in the election. He wanted the fight no matter what. Um, and he's talking about a fight that will continue after 2024 is election day. What are you prepared for now that you've dug into the history and you know what's possible? Well, I, you know, I, I just think, you know, I've been covering this a long time and I've been following it even longer. And, you know, the Republican Party I grew up in, uh, watching the uh, American political scene that I, uh, I grew up watching, there were certain rules. The winner won, even if they won somewhat unfairly. The loser lost. The, the, for the good of the country, they observed the peaceful transition of power. And we went on. And since 2020, that basic uh, assumption has, has gone out the window. And, you know, I think at, at real damage to the country because... I mean, what was it, just a year or so ago, there was a poll of all Republicans and 70% in 2023, three years after, saying still that they didn't think that Joe Biden was the legitimate yeah. president. What does that do to the fabric of a democracy when almost half the country doesn't think the president really is the president? Well, so the media landscape, as Tony pointed out, has changed dramatically. Uh, you write in the book that in 1950, only 10% of the nation's families had televisions. Uh, a decade later, 50 million. Just talk to us about the dynamics of that debate, the first debate that was televised, the first television presidency 
presidency, the makeup issue with Nixon and Kennedy, the look, the fact that Nixon was sick. There was so much going on there. Yeah. Well, that's right. And, and Nixon was absolutely confident. I mean, he'd been on the world stage. He had actually had a kind of informal debate or argument with Nikita Khrushchev, the head of the Soviet Union, uh, back in 1959 at a trade exposition in Moscow. So he thought, Jack Kennedy, this isn't going to be a problem at all. And probably didn't prepare enough for it. He also had suffered a serious staph infection. Mm. He was 10 pounds underweight. Kennedy comes in. He's gotten a rest. He's gotten a tan. He looked robust. He also was wearing a dark blue suit, mm -hmm. which uh, contrasted with the gray walls. Nixon was 10 pounds underweight. When he saw that Kennedy wouldn't take makeup, he didn't need it. Nixon, <laughs> who had a 5 o'clock shadow, refused to take makeup and looked terrible yeah. uh, and, and was wearing a gray suit that blended into the background. And in fact, during the debate, we report in, in the book, Countdown 1960, that Richard J. Daley, who's the uh, mayor of Chicago and the head of the Democratic machine, looks at the TV in the middle of the debate and says, my God, they embalmed him before he died. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, there's no it's, question it's that that changed, debate yeah. may have lost the election yeah. for yeah. Richard Nixon. And, and the radio the audience are great. had a different reaction than exactly. the TV yeah. audience. Right. And now, of course, we have the social media audience, which is a whole other complication. Uh, you have to come out with another book on that one. Chris Wallace, thank you very much. Countdown 1960, I hope there's not a countdown 2024, yeah. is available today wherever you like to buy your books. It's a great one. We'll be right back. Thank you.